Hi, I am Dr. Rishi J.P., Associate Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Vidyavartaka College of Engineering, Mysore. Today, I am here to give lecture on a very important subject called as Fluid Power Engineering. So earlier it was called as hydraulic and pneumatic. Now it is holistically called as fluid power engineering. The course code is 18ME55. Now let us move on. This course consists of five modules. The first module is intro that is introduction to the fluid power system. The second module is pump and actuators. The third module is components of hydraulic circuits design. Fourth is pneumatic power system and fifth one is pneumatic control circuits. So I will be dealing with the first and the second module. So first is the introduction part and the second one is very important pump and actuators. The remaining two modules three modules will be dealt by other eminent faculty members. So this is the overview of the syllabus. So the title is introduction to fluid power system and uh, before going to the fluid power system we need to know what is the learning objective behind this fluid power system right. So as we know that we are studied lot of uh, prerequisite subjects like fluid mechanics, right. So in fluid mechanics, we have studied lot of things regarding fluids, right. So this course is nothing but the extension of the fluid mechanics subject. This is nothing but the application part. Now if you see this learning objective, it is very straightforward. It is, it says that to provide an insight into the capabilities of hydraulic and pneumatic power fluids, right. So if you study this subject, you will come to know how marvelous machines are working. They are doing heavy duty work as well as light duty work precisely and accurately. The second important objective of this lecture is to understand concepts and relationship uh, surrounding force pressure, energy and power in the fluid power system. So these two are very important. So after the lecture, you will be coming to know about these two important things, right. Now let us move on. So this is the first part that is the introductory part. So in the introductory part, I will be giving you a brief introduction regarding the fluid power system. So this is the overview of my lecture. So the overview of my lecture consists of introduction to fluid power system, components of fluid power system, advantages and application, transmission of power. Pascal's law and its application, fluids for hydraulic system, types, properties, additives, effect of temperature and pressure. So these are all I will be going to discuss one by one in this lecture. So the first fluid power system. So let me give you a brief introduction regarding this fluid power system. So fluid power system has become a technology today. So you see lot of fluid power applications if you cross the road. You may be seeing a earth mover working, you may be seeing a JCB working deployed, right. So a dumper which is loading heavy materials and it is moving from one place to another place. If you see a coal mine, in the coal mine you can see lot of uh, what uh, dumpers uh, moving uh, uh, here and there, they are fully loaded with coal which is a very essential material for power generation, right. So all these things makes up the important vitality of fluid power system, right. So mainly fluid power deals with generation, 
transmission of power. So, all related to hydraulics and pneumatics, we are dealing with both. Both are fluid, right? So, pneumatic is we are using air, hydraulic means we are using oil. So, we are using air and oil to transmit power, of course, at different capacities. Now, uh, we have lot of uh, things to study. So, we use liquids like oil to transmit power. So, then it becomes hydraulics. So, already you have studied lot of things about hydraulics related to water, especially in your fluid mechanics class, right. Now, you are going to apply hydraulics for power generation and power transmission. If you use gas like air, air is abundantly available, it is of low cost, it is having high pressure, high characteristics, high temperature you can give, right. So, that becomes pneumatic system. If you are using compressed air, air having sufficient high pressure, it becomes pneumatic system, right. So, we are studying both hydraulics as well as pneumatics. The main objective is to generate power, transmit power, so that the work is done efficiently and effectively. Of course, the magnitude of work is tremendous here. It ranges from few grams to 10 age. So, a hydraulic system can put in an effort ranging from tons, 100 ton, 200 ton. A pneumatic system ranges from 10 kg to 1 ton or maybe 5 ton, right. So, let us move on. So, this is the objective of this lecture. So, fluid power system, right. So, this fluid power system uh, mainly employs fluids. So, what are all the different types of fluid you can use in fluid power system? So, some of the fluids which we are commonly using are petroleum, oil, synthetic oil and water, right. So, we are using all these fluid in every part of our life, knowingly and unknowingly, right. So, petroleum, we are using it as a fuel, we burn petrol, combustion, IC engine, we generate power and we use it for transmission, we use it for running a vehicle, right. So, synthetic oil are used as lubricants, we use lubricants to eliminate friction, wear and tear. Water, so water is abundantly available, throughout the world water is available, right. So, water we can use extensively for transmitting uh, power also. Now, so what about pneumatic systems? So, pneumatic system we is concerned with air, right. So, hydraulic system is concerned with fluids. So, pneumatic system is concerned with air. So, pneumatic system is derived from a Greek word called as pneumos. Pneumos means breathing. So, we inhale and exhale, the same thing is done in a pneumatic system. So, what we call it as extension and retraction. Extension and retractions are nothing but see analogous and similar to inhaling and inhaling by lungs in a human body, right. So, it is air. So, air and water which are a huge variety of sources available abundantly in the mother nature. You can tap this energy and you can use them effectively in transmitting the power. So, some of the components are available which are specifically designed for this purpose. So, we cannot use all the motors commercially available in the market for to be implemented as fluid power system. We require a special type of what a uh, components or gadgets or devices which are specifically designed for hydraulic or pneumatic systems and which can be used extensively for transmitting the power. So, components of fluid power system, right. So, whenever we study fluid power system, we should keep it in mind that fluid power system comprises of two important branches, one is hydraulics, another one is pneumatic, right. So, hydraulic is related to fluids, pneumatic it related to gases. So, we need to explore the basic components required for 
a pneumatic system for on the same comp and, the, and some more components are required for an hydraulic system right so before moving on let us try to compare these two uh, manifestations of energy right that is the hydraulic system as well as the pneumatic system so hydraulic system is a much robust system right it can take up tonnage of load right so it can effortlessly keep being deployed from generations for lifting and material handling devices or material handling system right whereas this pneumatic system is a compact system right which is of of course lesser capacity compared to hydraulic system but the hallmark of pneumatic system is that it is having a better control so if you look into the uh, operational aspects of these two system hydraulic system can lift or can perform heavy duty work whereas pneumatic system will perform a moderate work on the other hand what is the importance of pneumatic system control hydraulic system is very difficult to control whereas pneumatic system is easy to control it is control is very precise repeatable and accuracy so both are having advantages depending upon a specific application you can deploy an hydraulic system or you can deploy a pneumatic system so in short if we compare three prominent drives used in mechanical engineering sciences they are the electrical drives second one is the pneumatic drives and the third one is hydraulic drives if we arrange them in the order of increasing complexity the highest tonnage withstand or taken taken up is by hydraulic system uh, a moderate tonnage of work is withstanded by a pneumatic system and uh, a very light application is accomplished by an electrical system the second important thing when it comes to control so the control is very very accurate very precise right in case of electrical system and in case of uh, pneumatic system you have a better control but not as good as electrical system but it is much much far better than hydraulic system so when it comes to the control the hydraulic system has a very less rating so depending upon the application you can deploy any of these three types of drives right so under the scope we are under the scope of this course we deal only with hydraulic and pneumatic system now let us move on to the basic components explore the basic components involved in these hydraulic and pneumatic systems one by one so this is an hydraulic system right so if you see this hydraulic system it is having lot of components involved right so it is a pressurized system so first important thing is the source what we call it as a tank a tank is a finite source the tank should be leak proof right it should it can be metallic tank or a non metallic tank right so a tank is filled with hydraulic fluid so since this is an hydraulic system the tank is filled with hydraulic fluid so i will give you a simple example before exploring this configuration we have a, a automatic water level controller system in our house so it consists of three important components one is the tanks the sump the underground tank what we call it as sump filled with water from the municipality second one is the overhead tank which you are keeping it on the last floor of your house it is uh, maybe a syntax tank or something which you are keeping on the a pvc tank which you are keeping on the last floor of the house and you have a pump fitted in between the sump and the tank and of course suction pipe and the delivery pipe fitted to the pump and uh, you have all valves right and uh, to make the system more effective you have water level controllers water level controllers deploy sensors level sensors for determining the high level and the low level of the water both in the sump as well as in the overhead tank so what happens there pump will suck the water 
from the sump and it will load the overhead tank. So, the same thing is happening here. If you can use that crude example, the same thing is happening here. You require a source, you require a receiver and you have a chain of devices as the intermediaries. right? So, what we are doing? We have a source that is the potential energy. We are converting that potential energy into kinetic energy and in turn we are accomplishing the work. right? So, we have a reservoir completely filled with fluid, it may be oil of different viscosity right? and we have a suction pipe and that suction pipe as usual is fitted with a primer valve or what we call it as a foot valve. The foot valve will prevent cavitation or bubble formation in the suction pipe. The next is the uh, important thing is the suction pipe. To the suction pipe, we have a filter. So, why is this filter required? See, no matter how much care we have taken and ensured that the tank is uh, loaded with pure hydraulic fluid, but chances of interaction with the wall of the tank or, or the bottom of the tank is not being cleaned. So, mixing of old and new charges takes place and uh, the uh, tank gets contaminated. right? So, the fluid gets contaminated and uh, you are uh, sucking that fluid. So, it may enter into the pump and other uh, devices later on and uh, it may uh, what affect the performance of the system. In order to take care of those things, we have a filter fitted in the suction pipe itself. So, a filter will filter out all the particles entering into the pump, so that you get a pure hydraulic fluid getting into the pump. Right. So, pump we have we can we are not going to use a centrifugal pump later on in the next module I will be discussing about different pumps, special pumps which we are going to use in this hydraulic system like gear pumps, vein pumps, etc. We are going to use special pumps to drive this fluid into the uh, next device. right? So, the next device after pump is the pressure regulator. Now, this pressure regulator is very important because we need to step up and step down the pressure. We need to control the pressure. So, <coughs> similar to a voltmeter, uh, in the voltmeter you can or using a variac, you can step up the voltage or step down the voltage. By looking into the pressure regulator, we can step up or step down the pressure values. So, this is called as pressure regulator. So, that pressure regulator uh, will uh, very safe acts as a safety device. It will see that the system is operating in the working range. So, if it is not uh, over the over pressure or under pressure both is eliminated. So, you can fix the pressure within the working range and make sure that the system will operate efficiently. Next device in this circuit is directional control valve. So, this direction control valve is very important because it will change the direction of the fluid flow. right? So, for sometimes we need to uh, what supply the fluid in the forward direction. In some cases, we need to supply the fluid in the reverse direction. So, in order to change the flow, we use direction control valve. So, direction control valve is used to what change the direction of the flowing fluid either in the forward loop or in the return loop. Now, finally, the application. So, in the application shown here is nothing but an hydraulic actuator which is nothing but a cylinder. So, this is a cylinder, a linear cylinder. So, as usual any cylinder will be having a piston, a frictionless piston fitted and the weight. So, weight represents the effort, the work which is going to be executed. right? So, the piston as usual has two positions. In case if it is a vertical configuration, uh, the topmost is called as, topmost point is called as top dead center or TDC and the bottom most point of the cylinder is called as bottom dead center. So, from TDC to BDC. Now, 
if you look into the horizontal configuration, so the inner dead center and the outer dead center correspondingly the top and the bottom are replaced by inner dead center and outer dead center relative to the position with respect to the crank. Right? So, the left side is called inner dead center and the right side is called as the left dead, the outer dead center. Right. So, this is the vertical configuration, you can have an engine which is vertically operating as well as horizontally operating. Now, what happens in the forward loop? So, in the forward loop what happens? The fluid flow and it lifts the piston. The piston will move up from bottom dead center to top dead center. So, the work is done by the system. Right. So, in the reverse loop direction control valve operates and uh, the air is sucked out or the fluid is sucked out. Right. So, what will happen? The piston starts residing slowly downwards. Right. So, in the forward loop, the journey of the piston is from what? Bottom dead center to top, top dead center. In the returns, what is the uh, journey of the piston? From top dead center to bottom dead center. Right. So, in this case, uh, you can lock the piston anywhere in between. So, that is also possible. Right. So, if you take a damper and if you have two cylinders fitted on the left side and the right side. So, three important events are required. The first one is the loading. Second one is gradually lifting the body of the damper and you have to you need to hold that for a certain period of time until all the material will slide down. Right. So, that also you can do, you can halt the cylinder, you can pause the cylinder and now when all the material is slided down, you can again release the cylinder, return stroke. So, what will happen? It will come back to its normal position. Right. So, that is a good example for an hydraulic system where the fluid is used for what lifting the body and halting at some period of time and again it is coming back to its original position. Right. So, this is what as called as uh, the basic components of hydraulic system. Nowadays, lot of mechatronic system has come into picture and they have been used extensively now to increase the uh, what uh, the uh, safety aspects as well as the uh, efficiency aspects. So, this is the basic architecture of uh, the what components of hydraulic system. So, if you open any system, you will have hydraulic system. If you go for a dumper, it will be having this. If you go for a uh, metal handling system based on hydraulic system, it will be having this. Right. So, this is the three different positions you can expect. This first one is the uh, neutral position that is old, you can pass. Second one is the extend that is the piston will move up and third one is retract the piston will move down. So, this is an overview of what a typical pneumatic system. Now, let us move on to an hydraulic uh, pneumatic system, it is younger brother pneumatic system. Now, what is the difference between hydraulic system and pneumatic system? As such, there is no differences. So, what we use is, we use a uh, what a compressor in place of pump. We use a compressor in place of pump. right? So, what is the difference between pump and the compressor? Both are prime movers, both are pressurizing agents. right? They are used to increase the flow pressure. right? So, a pump can be used to increase the flow pressure of an hydraulic fluid and a compressor can be used to increase the pressure of air or other gas. right? So, we are just replacing pump by what a compressor and storage device of course, here we use a device called as a receiver. Receiver is a tank, it is used to store pressurized fluid. So, a receiver is there which is used to store the pressurized air inside the cylinder. Right? So, as usual we require other important devices like pressure regulators, direction control valves, etc. In this application, I am using the uh, pneumatic system for driving the grinding, grinding machine. So, this grinding machine is been drive, driven by this pneumatic system. Right? So, the direction control valve uh, is fitted to a hose pipe which is in turn fitted to a grinding machine. 
So, as immediately when you supply the compressed air to this grinding wheel, the wheel starts rotating, right. So, the wheel starts rotating and you can use that grinding for grinding purpose, right. So, what is the similarity now? What is the similarity between an hydraulic system and the similarity between a pneumatic system? The similarity between hydraulic system and a pneumatic system is that uh, both employ pressurizing devices. What is the difference then? So, one is a compressor in case of pneumatic system, another one is an hydraulic uh, in case of hydraulic system we, um, we use pump. Whereas, the rest of the components are same except that in uh, a pneumatic system we use uh, what uh, a larger capacity uh, variants whereas, in uh, the pneumatic system we use components of lesser capacity. So, this is the uh, overview of the components used in hydraulic system as well as pneumatic system. Now, let me uh, in a nutshell differentiate between these two manifestations of energy. One is the hydraulic system and another one is the pneumatic system. So, you can see here it employs pressurized air, sorry it employs pressurized fluid. In the case of pneumatic system, it employs compressed air or gas. What is the operating range? You can see that it can cross 700 bar. So, heavy duty application. What is the operating range? Maximum 5 to 10 bar, a light duty application. It is a closed system. This hydraulic system is a closed system. So, what are all the fluid enters? into the actuator, it has to come back to the receiver or the tank. It is designed as an open system. So, pneumatic system is open system. Once the fluid does it work, it is exhausted to the atmosphere. Now, what is the main thing about this hydraulic system? Main headache of hydraulic system? The main headache of the hydraulic system is that it develops leakage. whereas pneumatic system the pressure is very less. So, the leakage is very less chances of leakage is very less because when pressure is more the gasket and seal over a period of time they burst. Once they burst leakage occurs whereas, the lesser pressure, pressure involved here prolongs the life of the gasket and seal used in this system. Right? So, both are having advantages and disadvantages it is left to the designer to employ these manifestations of energy based on particular application. So, in short what I want to tell you is if you want to go for an heavy duty application please use hydraulic system. If you want to go for a light application you can go for pneumatic system and uh, both are having merits and demerits. But on the other side the other important criteria is if you want to have a better control then pneumatic system is the best right compared to hydraulic system. Let us move to the next. Now, the other difference are continuing with the difference. The hydraulic system the valves are present and uh, the lifting and the closing of the valves are mandatory. So, lot of complication is there because too many valves are employed. Whereas, in case of a pneumatic system fewer valves are involved and the operation is very simple. So, as you saw in the configuration diagrams this hydraulic system contains large capacity devices and components which makes the system bulky. So, as a result it is a stationary system it is a having lot of gross weight whereas, its counterpart that is the pneumatic system has components light weight components which makes it more portable and it is lighter in weight. So, this is a stationary system this is having certain degree of mobility. Next important thing which I need to tell is pumps are used for providing pressurized liquid whereas, in compressors we use compressed gas 
uh, generating from compressors. So this is very important. We cannot use compressor here or com pump there. So pump is used for pneumatic system, compressor is used for hydraulic system. Next, the system is unsafe to fire hazardous, right? whereas the system is free from fire hazard. So you may be wondering how. Oh, see what is happens is sometimes it has been found that if we use oil having poor technical parameters like fire points, flash points, so the oil itself will catch into fire. Whereas you can see that in case of pneumatic system, we are using air. So air may act as an extinguisher. So, what is the important advantage of hydraulic system is that this automatic lubrication occurs in case of hydraulic system because we are using a fluid which is a lubricant naturally, right? Whereas in case of the uh, pneumatic system, we are having uh, provisions for uh, lubrications add-ons. So, it is not an add-on. So, externally we need to add some lubricant. Uh, so, a lubricant is not a part and parcel of the system. So, this is the major differences between these two important uh, manifestations of energy. Now, let us move on to a advantages. So, the advantages of fluid power system. So, I am trying to give you or figure, figuring out the combined advantages of hydraulic as well as pneumatic system. So, fluid power systems are simple, easy to operate and easy to control. Right? So, fluid power system can be deployed in variety of applications because of these three important characteristics. Next, multiplication and variation of forces. So, very important thing about this fluid power system is you can transmit force without loss. Second one is you can have a mechanical advantages. What is mechanical advantage? So, mechanical advantage is very important because a small amount of effort can be amplified at the receiver end. So, I will give you a simple example. If you are using power steering in your vehicle, in your four wheeler. So, small torque of the watt steering will be amplified and the wheels will turn effortlessly to the left or to the right. So, this is called as power steering. This is due to servo mechanism. So, a small effort from your side is amplified by the system. right? So, that is why variation and uh, variation of the force and in turn power is possible only in fluid power systems. No other system can have this type of scale up and scale down of force and power characteristics. right? So, you can use for different application later on I will show you how small small efforts uh, can be done which can be amplified and the work can be done effortlessly. Multifunctional control. So, you can control the fluid at the source level itself or you can control at the transmission level or you can control at the receiving level depending upon your convenience. So, that is not possible in other drives. Low speed and constant force and torque. <coughs> so, one of the main problem with other uh, forms of energy like electrical energy is we cannot control the speed. So, that is not in the case of this one. So, this as low speed operation as well as you can maintain the constant torque characteristics. <coughs> Finally, we have a very good important commercial characteristics that is this manifestation of energy is economical. So, economical means <coughs> you can have a transmission of energy with abundance that is using air and water. Air and water are abundantly available, right? So, you can use them effectively and you can transmit the power. And another important thing is since these are fluids, so you can effortlessly transfer these fluids 
from the source to the receiver and with safety and without the fear of fire assets. These are all the basic advantages of fluid power system. So, you can see lot of applications in fluid power system. So, you can see a forklifter, you can see a metal handling system, you can see a coal mine where dumper and the crane is being employed, CNC system is having pneumatic system, overhead cranes, landing gear in aircrafts that is also having what a lot of uh, what pneumatic system involved. So, both hydraulic system and pneumatic systems have invaded almost all the critical applications of our life. Now, let me give you the overview of different types of applications. So, based on a particular scope. So, you name the scope, you will find out that the fluid power system are present. So, I am speaking holistically regarding the applications of both pneumatic as well as hydraulic system. So, in agriculture field, so in agriculture is a very important field because it, in the agriculture, the force or the effort need to be magnified, right. So, tractors, tillers, farm equipments, they use hydraulic systems. Aviation. So, aviation is very important because aviation is with respect to tonnage. So, the payload consists of the passenger weight as well as the cargo weight as well as the aircraft weight. So, this weight is tremendous. Right. So, this tremendous weight can be taken only by hydraulic and pneumatic system in a combination. So, wherever required, we can have a pneumatic system, we can also have an hydraulic system. So, some of the areas in an aircraft where we are deploying pneumatic system is landing wheels, trolleys, aircraft trolleys, engine test beds, all are employing this type of heavy duty systems. Next construction industries or building industries. For building industries, we employ pneumatic systems for mixing of concretes, right. So, if you want to construct multi-story buildings, so within the available time or target, we need to build that uh, multi-story buildings. So, mixing of concrete is very important that can be done in an upper at the site level itself by using pneumatic system. Construction equipments like earth moving equipments, excavators, loaders, bulldozers, crawlers, graders, they all use hydraulic systems or pneumatic systems. So, that is why we see that the highways are built in very shorter period of time. Earlier, highways took 5 to 6 years to complete the project. Now, it is compressed, the lead time is compressed. So, almost 1 or 2, 3 years depending upon the stretchment, the highway project completions are rolling out and more projects have been, been successfully coming out because of the presence of this hydraulic and pneumatic magnificent machines. In foundry, foundry is nothing but it is one of the part and parcel of manufacturing engineering, right. So, we prepare moulds. What is foundry? In the foundry, we prepare casting. So, what is casting? We pour molten material into a cavity and the, it acquires the shape of that cavity. So, lot of improvements have taken place since this is one considered as one of the oldest manufacturing trade foundry. So, full and semi-automatic molding machines are available, furnaces, tilting the furnaces very important because we need to pour the furnaces into the dies. So, die casting machines are available to eject the castings from the die, we use pneumatic systems. So, manufacturing industries is also deploying lot of hydraulic and pneumatic systems. So, in entertainment industries, so almost in entertainment and industries also we are using lot of uh, what, uh, uh, what hydraulic and pneumatic system in amu amusement parks, right, like skaters, rollers, coasters, etcetera. They are all using uh, what uh, hydraulic and pneumatic system to enhance the pleasure of the visitors. In defense, so, defense is very important. So, the protection of the country. So, we need to deploy tanks. 
So, tank and other uh, devices, they are also using pneumatic systems, missile launchers, navigation controls, they all use hydraulic and pneumatic system one or the other way. Fabrication industries, so fabrication is basically converting one form into another form by changing the shape. Hand tools like pneumatic drills, grinders, boring machine, riveting machine, nut runners. So, what has happened that the production volume has jumped. So, earlier only few comp lesser production volume, only few components were produced. By deploying this type of fabric uh, machines, we have gone into an era where we have been pro mass producing machines and components. Food and beverage industries. So, food is very important. So, all types of food processing equipments, wrapping and bottling units, they employ pneumatic and hydraulic systems. Metal handling systems, what we call it as a very important system. As we know that we have jacks for lifting devices, host, cranes, forklifters, conveyor system. They are used to just transport the material from one end to another end effortlessly. So, this is done by an hydraulic or pneumatic system. So, name and application, there you find all these devices. So, after looking into this different application, I will be presenting you with a video. That video will highlight the different applications of hydraulic and pneumatic systems related to different industries which you have already enumerated here, right? And uh, you will be seeing the different applications, different magnificent and marvelous machines which are doing the work effortlessly with ease and the job of the operator is just used to controlling them. I take this opportunity to acknowledge certain resources, especially web resources. So, as an add-on to this lecture to enhance learning experience, I have taken lot of videos from YouTube channel. So, I acknowledge the same. Advantages of fluid power system. Fluid power systems offer a wide range of advantages when compared to electromechanical power systems. These advantages of hydraulic and pneumatic systems makes them more popular to choose than other power systems. Knowing the benefits of fluid power system will allow you to choose better equipment for your manufacturing operations, which directly improve efficiency of your work. Has said, fluid power systems offer a wide range of advantages. In this video, we will discuss some of the main advantages of fluid power system. So, without any further ado, let's get started. The first advantage of fluid power system is accuracy and ease of control. The fluid power systems are very simple. They are easy to operate and they can be controlled accurately. Fluid power gives greater flexibility to equipment without the need of any complex mechanism. Using hydraulic and pneumatic system, it is possible to start the operation and stop the operation. Accelerate or decelerate the process. Motion can be instantly reversed and can position large forces with greater accuracy by using simple levers and push buttons. For example, in earth moving equipment, bucket carrying load can be raised or lowered by an operator using a lever. And one good example of easy operation of fluid power system is the landing gear of an aircraft can be retrieved to home position just by pressing push button. Multiplication and variation of forces. The output forces of hydraulic activator is the result of pressure applied and the area to which that pressure is applied. Force equals pressure times area, which means in fluid power systems, the force can be multiplied by a fraction of a kilogram to several hundreds of tons. Multifunction control. 
a single hydraulic pump or a single air compressor can provide power and control multiple machines using valve manifolds and distribution system. In hydraulic system, the pressurized fluid can be transmitted over long distance through machine configurations with only a small loss in power. Low speed torque Unlike electric motors, pneumatic or hydraulic motors can produce large amount of torque while operating at low speeds. Hydraulic and pneumatic motors can maintain torque at very slow speed without overheating. Constant force or torque Fluid power systems can deliver constant torque per force regardless of change in speed. Economical Not only reduction in required manpower, but also in the elimination of operator fatigue. As a production factor, is an important element in the use of fluid power. Low weight to power ratio Power to weight ratio is the ratio between the power that your system has to its weight. The hydraulic system has low weight to power ratio compared to electromechanical systems. Just compare 5 horsepower hydraulic motor with 5 horsepower electric motor. The 5 horsepower hydraulic motor is lighter when compared to 5 horsepower electric motor which would weigh up to 30 to 35 kilograms. Fluid power systems are compact in nature. Safety There are some specific applications for which fluid power provides much higher degree of safety than electrical based power sources. The hydraulic based power systems do not necessarily require electrical power. There is a greatly reduced risk of fire, sparking or shock. This feature of hydraulic systems also means that they have advantages in some specific environments. High temperature, chemical and other such environments are better served by fluid power systems. For example, hydraulic systems are responsible for the safety of takeoff, landing and flight of aeroplanes and spacecraft because hydraulic systems have higher reliability than other systems. Another example is the rapid advances in mining and tunneling are the results of the applications of modern hydraulic and pneumatic system. Disadvantages of fluid power system Fluid power systems have many advantages when compared to electromechanical power systems. There are some areas where electromechanical power systems perform better than fluid power systems. Some of the disadvantages of using fluid power systems are discussed in this video. So without any further ado, let's get started. Let's say you have a hydraulic or pneumatic system that has been utilized in an environment which is dirty. This dust interacts with your machine and degrades the machine over time. This affects the performance and life of the machine. To address this issue, careful filtration of the machine must be considered. In the hydraulic system, if there is a fluid leakage, that must be addressed immediately. Stop the machine and find out the source of leakage. The liquid oil in the workspace must be cleaned. Fluid leakage and spills cause a slippery and messy work environment around hydraulic equipment. If there is oil on the floor, someone might slip and hurt themselves. Sometimes these injuries might be life threatening. The petroleum based hydraulic fluid presents a considerable fire hazard, especially when they are under high pressure. 
particularly in those processes where ignition sources are usually present. Let's consider a scenario where the hydraulic component has a small gap due to wear and tear of the hydraulic system. Because of small clearance, it would be hard to notice any leakage in the hydraulic system. When the hydraulic system is under pressure due to this unnoticed small gap, the hydraulic fluid leaks in the form of mist. When the mist reaches an ignition source, the result can be a torch like ball of fire. If the oil mist is in a confined space, violent explosion can occur. This can be avoided by using fire resistant hydraulic fluid. Another issue with the hydraulic fluid is that they may pose problems if it disintegrates due to aging and chemical deterioration. The used hydraulic fluid needs special handling and disposal procedures. The disposal procedures of hydraulic fluid must follow environmental regulations. The pneumatic systems are cheaper when compared to hydraulic and electromechanical power systems. But the disadvantage of using pneumatic system is that the pneumatic system produces high levels of noise in the workspace. When air is directly exhausted to the atmosphere from the system, even after installing muffler or silencer to the exhaust of the system. Hydraulic systems are extensively used to perform wide range of manufacturing operations in the industry. One reason for their popularity is because of their ability to produce large magnitude of loads. To do their work, hydraulic systems must store fluid under high pressure, typically 2000 pounds or more per square inch. Fluid under tremendous pressure is hot. If hydraulic line burst, they can cause serious injuries. The worker is exposed to three kinds of hazards. They are burns from hot, high pressure fluid, bruises, cuts, or ablation from frailing hydraulic lines, and hydraulic injection of fluid into the skin. After watching this video, now you have stunned that how these machines are doing the work effortlessly. Otherwise, please imagine that these work will take years together for completion, whether it is highway road or whether lifting the machine, you require more number of uh, peoples, more number of labors to pick uh, the, uh, the load from one area to the another. So with this you com came to know that how force magnification, force variation is occurring in uh, what hydraulic and pneumatic systems and using that uh, we are uh, the say technology has been implemented in various domains, right. So, with this I uh, conclude my first topic that is introduction to hydraulic pneumatic system, right. So, what I need, mean, uh, need to uh, emphasize here is after this lecture the main takeaway is that or the main learning outcome is that you will be the student after the completion of this lecture will be able to understand the basic components of hydraulic system, basic components of pneumatic system. The next is the applications of the hydraulic and as well as pneumatic system combinedly which is called as fluid power system in different domains, right. And the student will be able to identify in a system whether a hydraulic has been deployed or pneumatic has been deployed. So, this is very important and based on this the next topic uh, is related to Pascal's law and uh, the Pascal law is the governing law for hydraulic and pneumatic. So, with this I stop the first close the first topic that is introduction to pneumatic systems. Thank you.